fun little video idea for the day, and I don't know how great it's gonna be, but I feel like it could be kind of fun. So as you saw, we spray bombed this door, and like, it would be a shame if we didn't finish it. Look at this thing screaming. <laughs> what is going on guys? Welcome back to another video here on Loud and Proud. So you're probably asking, what are we doing with the parts truck that could possibly be so interesting? Well, this truck of course has a blue bed, blue doors, blue hood, all these parts, right? And of course I'm gonna be selling this truck as a parts truck to somebody else because engine still runs great, transmission still shifts great, you know, everything, whatever. The frame is beautiful. Without ruining the rest of the truck, I wouldn't mind painting this truck white. And you're probably asking, how are you gonna paint the truck white? It's gonna sound really stupid, and it might even look really stupid, but I'm gonna be using a white primer and then a white paint with spray cans that are supposedly original Chrysler white colors for the older trucks. So that's what we're gonna be working on right now. How it's gonna turn out, I am not sure, but that's what we're gonna be working on. And let me show you the actual paints that I'm gonna be using just so you can have an idea in case this does actually turn out decent. Because of course there are a lot of guys that will buy very, very, very cheap trucks, whether they use them for like a hunting truck, to just go on their trips back in the woods, back off road, whatever. Mud toys, just beater trucks for the winter, stuff like that. There's a lot of people that will just run stuff. I'm not even kidding you. I almost bought a couple trucks like this once about a year ago just to run in the salt, just cause I'm like, I really don't want to run, you know, the 2018 in the salt or, you know, the 2019 Dually I had at the time or anything else like that. So I was thinking about getting a winter beater which would have been along the lines of something like this, something I can get for 500 to 1,000 bucks that's cheap enough but reliable enough to make it worth even doing. If it does have mixed match body panels like this to where it doesn't really look that great, but you really don't want to spend that much money on a beater truck, you know, whatever the case may be, whatever the application is, sometimes a little spray bomb in action can make the not so pretty trucks look a lot more desirable. So what we're gonna be working on is basically spray painting this truck white. What we're working with here is a Rust-Oleum bonding primer. It says it's professional grade universal primer. Firmly bonds to top coat to difficult surfaces, stops rust. So this is what we're working with. And then on top of that, once we're done, we're gonna be coating it with this because of course we wanna make sure we do a very proper paint job on this truck. So we're not just gonna prime it, we're gonna prime it and paint it of course. So that's what we're gonna be working on. So enjoy the video. We're gonna to get to the time lapse right now. So we did get the primer applied to the truck and it actually, believe it or not, it actually is looking pretty good. You can see right now it's got that little bit of a faded bluish whitish, it kind of looks like a white snow camo almost, but it's really like a flat color, it's a really flat color so that's going to be a very obvious difference right now. However, you can see in the one spot we did already apply the spray paint that's supposed to be the paint, you know, it's still kind of flattish and it doesn't look, you know, obviously perfect, it's a spray can, but they're very, very similar whites. Now obviously when you get out and look at the rest of the truck, you can notice where we have not sprayed any of the actual Chrysler white yet and it's still kind of like, you can see the blue fading through, like kind of like shining through. So we're gonna try this and we might get this side done and then we'll decide if we wanna do the other side. Unfortunately, I ran out of paint, which I kind of saw coming because I only had two cans of primer and two cans that were like the mini cans of the actual Chrysler color-coded white paint. And I, so I didn't really have enough. I didn't have a lot. But I did have enough just for you guys to kind of see what it could turn out to be. So of course, here's the bed, freshly painted, you know, straight out of the paint booth. I didn't get to the door. The door only has the primer on it. And as you can see, if you look at the door, you can kind of see like little bits of blue shining through in spots. That's because, well, it's only lightly primered. I didn't, I didn't have any paint to actually paint it. But when you come over to the bed, the bed actually looks pretty darn good. I'm actually like 
super impressed. And I didn't even take off the adhesive or anything. I just like sprayed over it. Same with the badging. Like I, I'm not masking anything off. It's already spray painted, okay? It's already like the lowest grade of paint you could possibly do. Not to mention it's all dented up and it's the doors are all beat up and everything. So it's like, I'm not, does it really make any sense to tape stuff off? But the rest of the truck is already in bad shape as it is. But here's the other side of the truck that hasn't been painted with anything. So that's what the bedside used to look like. It went from that bedside and that door to this. Kind of impressed. We're gonna drive the first gen today. Gym. Every $5 is 10 entries towards winning that truck, but 10X entries end on April 30th, which is in just a couple days. So enter while you can. Giveaway deadline is May 7th. It is the next day. We did not get a chance to finish painting the white truck, but we are on our way for a little more first gen action. My buddy Jeshua is actually selling his first gen today, and I'm sure the buyer of the truck will see this video. So congratulations on your new whip. What he's asking for it, I'm not gonna publicly state, but let's just say that kid's getting a good deal on the truck. I've seen trucks in the same condition sell for almost double what he's selling this one for. Great truck, has like no rust except for one little spot on the bed. It, all it needs is paint and it's just, it's good to go. But anyways, we're gonna go check out this truck. He's fixing one little thing on it and then the truck's great. I mean, he's been running it three years with no problems, nothing but oil changes and putting fuel in it. That's it. I mean, these 12 valves are so low maintenance. I'm cruising in the five speed right now. And I don't know if you guys have seen like any driving videos in this truck, but this thing rides so stinking nice, super smooth. It actually does not ride that rough. The guy's like, these 350s ride like log wagons. I think it might've been these old BFG tires that he had that were just like freaking dry rotted on here that are 20 year old tires. Cause with these brand new Interco tires on here, this thing rides really nice. I'm actually really impressed. Straight as an arrow, rides soft and smooth. Anyways guys, we're gonna get over there and catch up with Jeshua and see what he's up to. We'll figure out what all we're doing today, but I think you guys are gonna like this video. Yeah. yeah. Put air in all yeah. the tires, probably. So what are we working with here, Jesh? Well, I told him you were fixing a fitting. Yeah, pretty much. Got to put this right here. What was there was this rig of a contraption. Rig Show of them a the melted plastic. Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. So that's nice. No bueno. No bueno. This will go here right after I get my wrenches out. And then that's it. Yep. That's it. Oh yeah. I already replaced everything under here. This was the main leak underneath the alternator. You won't be able to see it. This is thing. nice to have. Oh yeah. You know, they're supposed to have a rubber flap here that like is screwed in up here and it just kind of like hangs. Yeah, well my truck has nothing. <laughs> it's missing the fan shroud. Man, when you check that blow by when that fan's spinning, you just pray and hope that you don't lop your fingers off because look how oh, close yeah, that right. thing is. Oh my gosh. I didn't realize that kid that was testing it literally had his hand right here and he was messing with it and I'm like, eh. Well, okay. We're putting the small one on now because the big one just had absolutely zero space in there. Like everything was rattling. We also put this little, what would you call it? A side kick? Yeah, like side pipe. Side pipe. Side exit pipe. And all we had to do was heat that one up and bang it a few times and it's good to go. Bang it a few times is in like 50. Yeah, like a bunch of times. And then rock it back and forth. And then so the only contact point would be right there. Uh, and all we gotta do is push it over and hang it, and she's Gucci. It's good. The squeak is gone. I pulled the whole belt off, which is extremely easy. It takes like 30 seconds on these trucks, as long as you don't have a shroud already, which you should, but mine doesn't. And I pulled the belt off, took it inside. Well, him and I tried to scrape it, clean it off with, what was that, carb cleaner? Yeah, it, yeah carb cleaner. That's what they recommended, at least. Yeah, well, this is only after we sprayed it down with this belt lubricant, wherever I put it. That completely glued it. Didn't it was it? not good. It was like <laughs> adding glue stick onto the pulleys in the belt. It's pretty good now. It doesn't make a sound, and it was fairly easy. Brake cleaner wouldn't get it off. You do have a lot of this stuff too. Again. Yeah, that might break again. But yeah, sweet.
Got the exhaust changed around. It did have that trash can hanging down under there, which it's I used to be into. Anything. It's not touching the frame at all. Yeah, but it was rubbing on the frame and rubbing on one of the shocks, but it's all good now. Hung back up out of the way. Aren't you wishing you would have done this like... It would have made years my ago? life so much more pleasant. Yeah. Going to the lake or work or anything. It's so quiet in the cab and all it's you can hear is the turbo the and the motor and you don't hear... No it's drone. just Yeah, no drone. You can hear everything in the engine is sound and smooth, but before it just adds like an unsteadiness to your mind when yeah. you hear all the clanging. Yeah. <sighs> Dang, it's nice. Much better now. Okay, so just got done working his first gen, and we were actually in the truck today. He asked, why doesn't your window work over there? Yeah. And the window didn't go down on that side. And this is why. The window wire it's just. It was is, done very poorly. Yeah, it was done poorly. So I'm just going to reconnect it. I'm using marine grade wire, so it will never rust, no matter what. This old stuff, you can see it's kind of already corroding, which is just it's just fine because it'll never be submerged, but we're just gonna use marine grade. We'll just cut a little section here, take this off, all uh, right about here. Figure out which gauge this is, probably 14. And strip it, do the same here. So we got two open ends, in fact, <laughs> that one just unpulled, so we probably got two to fix. Wow. See, these things, if you can avoid this, do not do this. These always come undone. I use some in my boat. Same thing happens. It's like, these don't work very good. We got some heat shrink. We got my little torch. Where is it? Right here. You need flux, which I think we have. This stuff. And this stuff. And this is all your wire needs. This is exactly the best stuff to have. So now we take my little white piece here. Could be black or red, doesn't matter. It's just all about color coordinating. And there's no color coordinating right there, I don't think. So. Never forget to put your heat shrink on first or you're gonna have a heck of a time. I like to dip it into the flux or the solder, lead-free soldering paste. I don't really wanna get it on anything. Or you can take it with your finger. Yeah, I'd rather dip it like this. Just get it all up in there. I mean, as much as you can get on there, the better, I guess. I mean, that's what I like. And then this one, obviously, you have a harder time dipping it in there, so just soak it. It's an entertainment channel, not a how-to channel. I should stop telling them what I'm doing. Yeah, but this is good, because there's some guys that have some wiring issues, and they probably like to know how to do it the right way. Yeah, wiring... I, don't, I wouldn't know this either. Wiring is extremely easy after the first time you do it. Another thing is, don't burn all your other wires. <laughs> <laughs> or your seals, or the door. One of these little torches will save your life. It is such a good little torch. So if I can get it to stay, hard to see, but you always want to come up from underneath on it, get the whole thing hot, get it real nice and hot before you touch it with this, because otherwise you'll get what's called a cold solder, and that's no good. So get it hot, go from above and it'll go all the way in. See, like that's a cold solder, but the torch really needs to heat up. Okay, now it's getting into it. And it's in it. I'm gonna let that cool. That's so, it, that flux lets that, lets this, uh, what's this called, rosin core, get in between all the fibers, so it makes a really good bond. And then that looks all ugly, but that's what this is for. We're gonna go over top of it like that. And just, it's really windy out turn this thing up it's just a uh, marine grade heat shrink you don't need marine grade anything I just have all this because I work on my boat and it'll just heat shrink around there and it's got this little resin in there that prevents water from getting in see that shrunk right around that yeah. line this side's taking a little bit longer There it is. 
guys. Okay. You're gonna have to, man, I really don't have much space here, so you have to be really careful. You've only got one shot with this one. So you'll have to really get that one right. If I cut that too short, we're gonna have to go in the door and then add to it, which still isn't that hard. But I'm gonna give it plenty of wire. Okay, same thing. Dip it in there, get it all in there because you really want that uh, rosin core to really get in it. You want to get that one. Sometimes I just kind of poke them into each other, to get them to get that rosin core bond. And then if you can, twist them together. So get it like that. This one is a little tougher because there's not much material there. Give it some more rosin. You should probably wear gloves. I don't know if this stuff's toxic. <laughs> but since he just helped me all day with his with my truck, I saw this and thought it was a perfect opportunity to pay back a little bit of his help. You're so kind, Joshua. You know? Because I was gonna have to do that here in the next couple of days and I'm like you know I really don't know the best way to fix that other than I may need you to hold you this <laughs> with this part that won't cut it and hold it away from those wires for me okay. so you can just hold it like yeah, that I'm gonna set the camera down for a second then I'll pick it back up okay so that one's done it's hard to do when there's not much but it's it's pretty solid I'm not gonna pull on it or really hard or anything like that because we just did it <laughs> yeah we may have to zip tie it because I left a lot more play in here than I, I thought but I didn't want to have less and then it not and work. then you close or open the door and it rips it or something stupid right so we've got plenty of room and of course I'm just gonna do the heat shrink thing again this one's the right size so it'll just shrink right down boom 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 doesn't hurt the other wires as long as you're going slow Okay, that one's ready. In fact, we can test it. I wonder what this black wire was doing. Yeah, I wonder. Because it was already, looks like it wasn't even attached anyway. The windows work, we did test them. Yeah. And they roll up and down now, perfect. Yep. Just keep shrinking away now. And, and they're waterproof. These are the best connections in the entire truck. Yeah be the last thing to go out right there. Which key, does it matter? Uh, nah, this is one of those black, black keys. Can I go all the way? No, I mean you can. I had it all the way down today. They work, they really, they really work. And that's normal, a little yeah. slow in the middle. Yeah, that's because the truck's not on. They're really slow when the truck's not on. Bang! Sweet! Wait, wait. I don't know why the locks don't work. That's kind I of can weird. hear it trying to. The wires work, though. Huh. All that's left is I'm going to tuck these in and wrap them with my expensive $11 roll of Scotch electrical tape. I don't know how expensive it really was. <laughs> We're just going to go with that. I'm going to go around it a couple times. These are really strong, so it should be okay. We'll neaten it up and wrap it in there. We'll figure it out. I'm just trying to get it so he doesn't close the door on it. I haven't driven this truck too much, so this is probably like the third time I've actually driven it around for like a day. Things just, it's so, it's so fun. It is like honestly one of the coolest experiences ever driving this. It's like a step back in time. But when everybody sees it that's a truck person or they have an appreciation for old vehicles they think that thing's freaking cool and it just turns heads it really does but anyways guys thank you so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed that video remember if you want to get your 10x entries towards winning this truck plus five thousand dollars cash 10x entries end on april 30th which is in like two days i think go down to lmpgear.com get your entries while you can or if you'd like to enter to win my wife's truck giveaway she's also giving away truck at dieselbabegear.com that link will also be down in the description below and you guys can actually enter to win both of our giveaways and you could technically legally win both giveaways if you got so lucky anyways guys thank you so much link in the description below i'll catch you guys in the next video peace